Hello friends, here we are. This is 30 days of inner journey, your thought, your life. And today it's all about your thought in your life. Chapter four, instruction. Yes, 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 we're studying the book that was psychographed by the medium Chico Xavier and was uh, published by the Brazilian Spiritist Federation. The English version was published by Roundtable Publishing in the United Kingdom in 2012. And thanks to Elsa Rossi, now it's under the copyright of the British Union of Spiritist Societies and available throughout the world. If you're in the United States, Canada, and other locations, I think you better contact the, the local distributor here in the United States, the Spiritist Group of New York, sgny.org. Hello, Adilson and Carol and Mark. Hello, sunshine. Yes, friends, here we are with a beautiful opportunity of studying together. A book that is yet to be understood in our planet Earth. Why? Because this book, interesting enough, as in the introduction, Emmanuel explains to us, mm -hmm. this book is a book that is studied in the schools of regeneration in the spiritual realm. And it's used for people who are preparing themselves for successful reincarnation. And when we say successful, we mean a reincarnation that has goals, milestones to be achieved. And this book guides us, no matter the milestones, we'll be able to achieve the, the goals of that reincarnation. That's what a successful reincarnation means. It doesn't mean like rich and beautiful and, and, uh, influential socially speaking it just means planned a plan a planned reincarnation the reincarnatory plan being fulfilled that's it mm, quite interesting in the introduction we learned about these reasons why this book is here for us chapter one the mind as the mirror of life chapter two we've studied it's about our will and chapter three, which was yesterday, we studied about the very fact that cooperation is the key to our readjustment in the evolutionary process. How beautiful is it? But it's beyond beautiful. It's the certainty that life has a meaning, that there is a purpose, and that we're not here by chance. You know that many people on this earth are not fully aware of it. The awakening of the consciousness of the conscience happens gradually. So don't be afflicted by the dormant consciousness because God is taking care of everyone. Even when we read in the news about outrageous outcomes and tragedies etc trust in God that if God is allowing it it's because there is a way out as Emmanuel said in other books the remedy for evil is in itself okay are you ready as Karen Mark say in the Kardec Radio for Kids ready set go instruction hmm instruction it has been said that two wings are needed for the human spirit to ascend to god one is called love and the other wisdom through love which is above all service to our fellow beings we are illuminated and made beautiful within so emitting a reflex of our own virtues that can benefit others through wisdom which begins with the acquisition of knowledge we gather influences from those who have gone before us towards progress who send us the reflection of their own greatness so impelling us towards heaven through love we are able to undertake life through wisdom life increases its value in value 
Hence, the imperative need for intelligence and goodness to go hand in hand. Goodness which is ignored is like a shady well that quenches the thirst of the traveler but does not show him the way. Intelligence devoid of love is like a useful signpost that shows the pilgrim the right road but leaves him to the torments of thirst. We all have the need of both instruction and love. To study and to serve are inevitable routes in the work of elevation. All intellectual culture is formed by a sequence of gradual expansion. Civilizations succeed civilizations without interruption according to the influx of mental heritage. Art, whether in words, music, chisel, or brush, evolve and perfects itself through the intermediary of repercussion expressing itself in the work of the cultivators of beauty, beauty who inspire one another. A school is a center of spiritual influence where the teachers of today continue the task of the instructors of yesterday. A book represents a powerful magnet of, attra of attraction molding emotions and concepts from which are born the great movements of humankind in all sectors of religion and science, of ideas and technology, as well as the process of thought and activity. In this dynamo of creative energy, we find the most advanced services of telementation, telementalization Seeing that over great distances in space and time, we are able to incorporate ideas from the superior spirits who visit us many centuries ago. Socrates is reflected in the pages left by his disciples who closely shared his company and to this day we continue to make use of the high concepts he demonstrated. Jesus is portrayed in the books of the Apostles as they spread his teachings and in the Gospel we have a crystalline mirror in which the Master reproduces himself through divine reflection, guiding human behavior towards the construction of God's kingdom amongst all creatures. To get to know the teachings is to undertake our own liberation by placing ourselves on the road to the horizons of life. Therefore, it is our responsibility to always study and make the best choices so that our ideas and examples may reflect the ideas and examples of the superior spirits of light. Are you surprised? When I first read this, I was surprised. Because there are so many revelations here to the aspects of life that probably we've heard before somewhere else, like something like that, but not precisely like this. Who could tell that instruction would be so fundamental? Yes. Intelligence is an acquisition of the soul, but it, its development depends on us, but the source of intelligence is God. It is on us to really boost the intellectual capacity and search for instruction, but not to forget he begins the chapter with the balance of it all. So let's go back. Now we're going to discuss. It's very deep. It's amazing how this book is short, as Carlos mentioned in the first uh, uh, clip that we put together. But at the same time, it's so concentrated. Hello, Leonor and Angelita. Thank you, 
everyone for being here creating this community that is joining the constructive mental currents in the world right we're not alone neither you nor I so if he begins instruction so we don't forget that it's not enough to know but we have to feel it as Jesus said to Nicodemus Emmanuel as a a, an aligned apostle of Jesus, he begins by telling us the balance. Two wings are needed for the human spirit to ascend to God. I want to ascend, I want to ascend. Me too, me too, everybody. What do I need to do? Love and wisdom. Okay, what is love? What is love? <laughs> I'm not going to sing this, it doesn't match. <laughs> but what is love here? He defines it. He defines it. He says, love above all is service to our fellow beings. Oh, I love the person, but I don't know how to help. Well, when we really help, we're already loving. That's the direction. Hello, Marcio, Lee, and Felipe. Oops. That's great to have us all here. Love is above all service to our fellow beings. Yes, very, very clear. Love is active. Love, as in Paul in the Corinthians, right? Is kind and is patient. Bottom line, active. And let us not forget that Mentor Joseph once explained to us that in reality, service, the difference in the emphasis of work in the word service is because service is work in the time of the person, at the time of the person we're helping with, not at our own time. Mm -hmm. It's completely different. I can work and decide when I'm going to do this and in the other. But when I'm serving, I'm serving, fulfilling people's needs at the time that they need, not necessarily the time that I can and the time that is most fitting for me. Not simple. No wonder Jesus said in the book Good News that we've studied days ago. It's about this sacrifice with joy. Sacrificing what? Our ego, our needs, and prioritizing the needs of others. In other words, the true sense of altruism. You want a quiz? I can feel you. I can feel you blinking therapeutic moment therapeutic quiz and it's blinking zero to ten zero to ten zero and ten zero and ten and here we are where are we regarding altruism altruism being defined as when we prioritize the needs of others in spite of our own needs where do you think you are zero being like uh, not good at all or ten Excellent. I always prioritize the needs of others. That's Jesus, by the way. Okay, so don't don't feel ashamed if you're not going to say 10 because 10 is for Jesus. <laughs> so that's okay. It's already taken for now. We're going to get there. 10, but not yet. Okay. Thank you, Felipe, for sharing it. Hello, Sueli. So where are we regarding altruism? Let's do the quiz. The scale 0 to 10, 0 being not good at all, and 10 being excellent, but it's taken by Jesus, so 0 to 9 then. Where are we? Do we prioritize the needs of others, or we are daily feeling our needs? If you think that fulfilling your tasks at work is altruism, it doesn't count. You know why? Because you're being rewarded financially. So it doesn't count. Work for others doesn't count as altruism. Altruism means you prioritize others and you don't necessarily fulfill your needs when you're serving. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard our guided model, Jesus, saying, um... I can't talk to you now because I have to eat. No, I cannot help you and give you the laying on of hands because right now I have to sleep. 
etc., etc. You've never heard of this, right? Me neither. What does this tell us? That uh, he was constantly at service. He was constantly altruistic. He's the model. He's the model. I know it's hard to grasp, but that's our model. And not a model of angelic being. As Emmanuel says in the book Living Spring, Jesus is a model of real humanity. That's what a true human being needs to become. We're no longer in the animal kingdom. We manage our instincts, our needs, mind over matter, and we become the real human beings that we're supposed to do. Thank you for sharing, Tanya. You're like 4.9, is that what it is? Or 9? Okay, but thank you for sharing. It's good for us to meditate together, okay? So, love is above all service to our fellow beings. Through love, we are illuminated and made beautiful within. It's the first time that I realize a menu using this word, beauty, beautiful. Of course, I've never done a true research on this. But recently, through the studies of Leon Denis in the book Art and Spiritism, which is yet to be in English, but a unique book, we don't have any of the kind available with the depth he gave to us. But he talks about this important concept of truth, good, and beauty. And he says that beauty is about harmony. Mm-hmm harmony and harmony is the byproduct of love action so we are illuminated through love and we are made beautiful within I want to be beautiful it's much cheaper to love than to go through plastic surgery <laughs> right so it's cheaper let us love Look at Divaldo Franco. He's going to turn 90 years of age this year, 2017. May 5th. Mm -hmm. El Cinco de Mayo. Believe it or not. Yeah, that very day. And he, he looks rejuvenated. Outside and inside. What does it tell us? Love in action. So we're meeting a reflex of our own virtues that can benefit others. Remember, we are vibratory beings emanating love, serving others, and that illuminate us, make us beautiful within. Our vibratory tone raises itself, and we, without words, we can embrace people. Let's do this exercise now. How about it? Think about somebody you think would benefit from a therapeutic hug, a hug of good wishes, of beautiful vibrations of love. Let us close our eyes and feel ourselves emitting that hug, that embrace of kindness, of healing to that person. Let us tell mentally that person you are a child of God. You are, you are love, your peace, your light, your joy of living. And embrace the person in that vibration. That's a good exercise for us. We shall practice it ever more often when you see people undergoing pathways that are strange, and ask, what can I do? Embrace them mentally. Visualize Jesus embracing them. Visualize, send them these affirmations of your trust in their divine essence. And then we're going to be boosting the best in them. Even though we may not be there, physically speaking. Hmm? Ah, God, you Tanya. Yes, we're working on being altruistic. Five is a good number. 
And so leg, she's sharing love changes everything. Love is in the air. How about singing that when you see a tragedy and visualize lots of hearts and sing love is in the air everywhere I look around so we can visualize the higher spirits already taking care helping and minimizing the impact of that tragedy in the world because now anything that happens has a global impact anything because of our global connections social media you and I cannot do anything any longer without thinking this could have a global impact it has always been like this spiritually speaking but now it becomes more evident because of the social media what does it tell us that if you and I can be in touch through these apparatuses which are often through Wi-Fi connections the technological advancements are telling us that we have been having this global impact through our perispiritual brain and our physical brain ever since. But now we're seeing it with our own eyes through the technology, the material part of life. Mm -hmm. Through wisdom, he says, a wing. Now we're birds. No, we're not birds. <laughs> the human spirit, he talks about wings. So one wing is love. The other is wisdom. Begins, which begins with the acquisition of knowledge. Wisdom is not knowledge, but part of it begins with knowledge. It begins. So knowledge is important. And that defeats the theory that many people say. I don't need to study, I already know, and you know there are many people whom I know that they are book smart, I'm street smart, I don't need to read books, um, books, we'll see, are precious, and they make a difference. Well, book smart doesn't do it all, because you can get instruction in your own experience, but the combination of both would be ideal. So studying is important. Reading is essential. It changes our neurophysiology, says science nowadays. Hello, Edivanda and Rita de Cassia, making miracles in Georgia. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I love St. Rita de Cassia. So wisdom through it. We gather influences from those who have come before us. Pause again. How much do you acknowledge your intellectual heritage? Not the one that comes from your family, but before humanity, humanity's history. Not only ours and our family, but the millennia and the many souls that advanced our world with their effort and their wisdom so we could be here today. You know, you probably have heard of the systemic family constellation therapy that was created by the German uh, Bert Hellinger. And he says that we in an analogy are like trees and the trunk is our relationship with our parents our roots are the way we deal with it but not only the parents the whole heritage of generations and generations this is us so whatever is going to nourish us so we have our foliage so we can have fruits and flowers depends on this heritage depends on our roots we cannot despise it. So first and foremost, we need to reconcile, make peace within ourselves with the, the much we have acquired through the generations that came before us. How much do you acknowledge it and appreciate it? Yes, generations, we were there sometimes, but not all the time. 
and many people contributed to the progress that now we enjoy. How much do you and I acknowledge this beautiful heritage? Hmm? It's very important to acknowledge. No wonder in the Ten Commandments, the fourth is about honor your mother and your father. But not only the physical, I mean, the millennial mothers and fathers that created our nation, the United States, Canada, Brazil, England, Australia, and Poland, and, and India, and Russia, and everywhere in the world. So, we need to appreciate it in order to be, have a good root that is not going to be suffering our own despising so we can nourish ourselves and keep blossoming in our own individuality thank you so much Rita for your kindness so through love we are better able to undertake life through wisdom life increases in value the imperative need for intelligence and goodness need to go hand in hand so he says, instructions is important as long as we don't forget to love. But now he's going to tell us what happens when we have this love, okay, but we don't have wisdom. He's going to say, it's like a well that quenches the thirst but doesn't show where to go. We need the direction of knowledge, wisdom. So he's saying that love nourishes us. So Kardec Radio is a good combination, I tell you. Nourishes our souls, but tells both. It's about love because everybody who works at Kardec Radio, including everybody who listens to Kardec Radio, is, does it from the heart. Nobody uh, earns a penny and does beautiful work out of love but also sharing the instructions of spiritism mm -hmm. hello laura so intelligence when it doesn't have love it's like a beautiful signpost pointing the way but you cannot nourish the soul of the pilgrim who is passing by so it's always like you know missing something missing it it's cold right it's very cold here too Rita I know we're warming ourselves up in this gym of the soul today chapter 4 instruction book thought in life by Emmanuel through Chico Xavier people can acquire it at the SGNY website okay now we all have the need of both instruction and love to study and to serve our inevitable routes in the work of elevation. Okay, pause again, because we need to feel it. If these are the two wings, love and wisdom, and we need both, okay, to elevate ourselves, balance. Some people are like, oh, but I love so much. But look, the other wing, love love but i need the other one to elevate balance and the reverse oh, i know so much but i need love service to others so do you, do you think uh, you could ask yourself let's ask ourselves as a moment of inner journey these are 30 days of inner journey with emmanuel with this book that is helping us accomplish what we need in this reincarnation. What do you think? Which of your wings are stronger? Do you think you can tell? Which one? Now, maybe when you started this reincarnation was a different game, but now, what about it? Is it love that is stronger? Or wisdom, intelligence? What do you think? Instruction or love? Where do you think you are? Do you think you, you have a balance? 
just so you don't get confused it's very likely that one is more um, is stronger than the other because as we reincarnate at the level we are on the earth we're still reincarnating to boost more one of this than the other so we can keep balancing ourselves and one day shh, truly ascend that's when we are able to psh, ascend where do you think you are you think it's more the wing of love stronger or the wing of instruction where is it ah tanya i knew it yes love in you for others it's instruction so now we need to keep studying this chapter to verify how we can balance it out and work on striving to strengthen the one that is weaker so we can have greater balance in life okay yes many parents around the world educators are focusing too much on instruction and that's a problem because we're gonna boost we're gonna boost something without the practice of love many parents are like the other day some parents told me oh but i i'm focused on the instruction of my children i said yes but you know if they don't practice the emotional development the spiritual they're gonna suffer because we are vibrating beings. The intellect cannot give us uh, everything that we need. We need to balance. Learn, practice. Learn, practice. Learn, practice. Instruction and service to others. Instruction, service to others. We need to teach our children to balance it out. Not only the ones that are under our wings in, the, in our homes, but whomever children we're in contact with. Boosting the emotional. Making them f feel the expansion of their empathy. Eh? And how can we do this? By telling them. How do you think people feel when you behave this way? So we're, we're creating that awareness. It's all about awareness first. Mm -hmm. So, since you already found out, still learning, yeah, Rita is saying. So, if we already know more or less where we are in regards to the wings of our evolution, love and instruction or wisdom, here is Emmanuel telling us more. Hmm? All intellectual culture is formed by a sequence of gradual expansion. People are saying, but Vanessa, the world is going crazy. Stop. Go read the book on the way to the light by Emmanuel. And you're going to see that we don't need to be desperate. We're evolving. Not only materially, but moral, ethically speaking. And this is the time of the planetary transition. By the way, this book is already in English th through Divaldo Franco the Medium and the Spiritist Manuel Flomeno de Miranda. You can buy it at the bookstore of the Spiritist Group of New York at gny.org. And this book, Planetary Transition, explains to us, based on the Spiritist teachings, that this is a moment when we're seeing things clearly. Things all have always been like this in a way but we didn't know this fast and this much now we know and it's coming clear and people are taking more and more actions to make our planet better he's saying we have this mental heritage how do you feel you have this influx of mental heritage from the civilizations that came before But we need to ask ourselves, is there any ancient civilization that bothers you? Hmm? Because if it does, it's likely you've been there before. And you still don't accept yourself when you are there. 
because probably you had a very outrageous reincarnation. Yeah, that's how we recognize our experiences. We need to pay close attention to it, very close attention. I, I know people who say, oh, I don't like that ancient civilization because they have traditions that I this, that, and the other. Well, it's valid. But why do you think uh, you are focusing so much on this and not others? They have similar mistakes. Because we've lived there and we haven't forgiven ourselves to date. So we need to go, what can we do? Yes, if that's the question, Mentor Joseph is sharing with us. Study that civilization that bothers you deeply. Read about it. Go to the book on the way to the light. Study it and find out about the good things that this civilization brought to the earth. Because any and each civilization brings pluses and minuses. But focus on the pluses. And if you see the minuses, take a look with the need of understanding as Jesus recommended to us because we're going to make peace with ourselves in the past. We need to make peace with ourselves in the past. And appreciate, as he says here, the influx of this mental heritage that comes to us. Hello, Monica. Yes, it's very, very important. And he now goes to the heritage through art. And he says that it evolves, and this is the work of the cultivators of beauty who inspire one another. It's the second time in this book and in this chapter 4 that Emmanuel mentions a unique term, beauty. Beautiful and beauty. He's constantly He's, in a way, associating this beauty with instruction, evolution, wisdom, harmony. If God is the supreme intelligence of the universe, then the more you expand your intelligence, being intellectual, emotional, spiritual intelligence, we are going to come to a more harmonious state. And when we're harmonious, we express beauty. How beautiful is this? Harmony, beauty, beauty, harmony, God and beauty in the universe. Is there anything God created that is not beautiful? Mm -mm. If you say a cockroach, it's because you've never studied a cockroach like a <laughs> like an entomologist, yes, or any other bug, like a fly, like a street rat. We may not like it, right? Yeah, but it's cute. It can be cute if it's clean, domesticated, right? <laughs> But if we observe, there is perfection in every detail, right? Yes, thank you, Rita de Cassius. Yes, always love to make things better. Thank you, Carol, for sharing your beautiful thoughts, too. Now he's going to say something that is very dear to our hearts. School. Who loves school? Me, 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 me. Beautiful place where we learn and help also to serve a school is a center of spiritual influence who could ever imagine this concept spiritual influence where the teachers of today continue the task of the instructors of yesterday it's so true but we need to balance this out because if we don't balance this out we're gonna stress one another very much you know, our educational system needs to be adjusted. And I'm going to give you an explanation about this, an example. If you go to medical school today, in Brazil, it's about six years. In the United States, after college, it's four more years before blah, 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 residence, da, 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 da. The same four years that people did 
hundred years ago. And the knowledge that people worked upon a hundred years ago was so much less. No wonder medical students are so stressed out. Because we are accommodating the same amount of time, a zillion more uh, instructions. And that stresses us out. Because we need time to digest, to file, etc. Hello, Rudy. You love school? Ah, oh, that's great. Me too. Love it. But it's a beautiful center of spiritual influence because our instructors are influencing us too. How important is it if you are an educator to know that you're leaving a legacy for your students? So don't mind if your students don't appreciate now. As they mature, they will. But do your best. Let's do our best. Oh, but they don't care. But we care. It's not about how they take it. It's about how we do it. We love it. We appreciate it. And we know we're, we're diligent sowers. So we go there kindly and plant the seeds of God's love and instruction. And at the right time, that soil is going to blossom and it's going to sprout. And we're going to see the fruits. Or not, because as Paul said, it's not on us to wait and see. We need to sow and go. Yeah, so and go. Don't wait. Many parents also make that mistake. They sow, they sow, and they don't see the result. They're like, see, it's useless. No, no, no. That terrain, the soil of that heart, has its own pH, has its own dynamics, has its own structure. We wait. Keep sowing, keep working, watering, caring, taking the weed off. And then one day we'll see it. Because our child, the child of others are all children of God. It's worthwhile investing. We're prone to learning. We're prone to progress, love progress. Thank you, sunshine. I am just uh, facilitating because the teacher, the truth is, is Emmanuel here. What a teacher. And now he's going to tell us about the most striking part of this chapter. A book. Spiritism was born with a book. Unlike all religions and all philosophies in this world. Spiritism was founded, the first milestone and the first foundational stone is the Spirit's book. Then everything else unfolded. Why? Because we depend on that book? No, but because it's telling us that it's time for us to clarify things, to be instructed, to accommodate new knowledge, to boost our wisdom so we can love more easily. Kardec asked this question in the Spirit Book. You know, of these two things, which one help us go faster in the pathway of evolution? And they say, knowledge. The intellectual. The intellect can bring us to the next step. Mm -hmm. So whatever you instruct yourselves with, you're helping. Mentor Joseph always says, Vanessa, whatever you read that is healthy and beneficial, it's going to prepare you to evolve more and more and more. Because the pure spirits of the universe, they need to know of everything. Everything. So if you have a medication and you don't have anything to do, all you have is the instructions, read it. Oh, Vanessa, but I don't, read it. Oh, but I don't know anything about pharma, pharmacology. Well, but just read it. But some words are difficult, read it. Just read it, because you have to know one day. So if you read it today, you're gonna prepare yourselves for tomorrow. 
any knowledge is worthwhile. If people invite you to do a course, go. Take that course. But it's going to be a waste. Nothing is a waste. For us spiritists, it's always wonderful. It's always fitting. We learn, we instruct. Every, every knowledge we acquire, we're going to bring to immortality. So you can tell that to your children too. If they say, this is a waste. No, no. Anything you study, you're never going to keep it on the earth. You know, there is a message by Emmanuel in the book Living Spring. I was reading with Carlos today as we were praying at home. And it talks about the fact that we're not going to take anything physically speaking to the other life, to the spiritual life. But everything else we will, virtues and knowledge, experience. So it's always worth it. People tell you, read this book. Yes, thank you. And this book. Yes, thank you. And this book. Yes, thank you. And another book on something else. Yes, thank you. Oh, but I'm not so sure. As long as the book is healthy and good, it's worthwhile. It's worthwhile. Because now, the longest paragraph in this chapter, why is Emmanuel putting so much emphasis in this paragraph? He's talking about the instruction. He's talking about book. And he says, first school and then book. A book represents a powerful magnet of attraction. That's a revolutionary definition. I've never heard in my life. And he's going to say why. A powerful magnet of attraction. Molding emotions and concepts. From which are born the great movements of humankind. In all sectors of religion, science, ideas, technology. The process of thought and activity. Eshu Sara. Right on. Thank you for joining us. Hello, my sister Luciana. And Guilherme. Oh, thank you, Rita. We love being together. Love society. So here we have a book as a powerful magnet of attraction. It molds our emotions. I bet that probably you've never paid so much attention to how much this spiritual, this spiritist teachings refer to our management of emotions. But they do. Molding our emotions, managing them through books and our ideas. So, question, is it important to read books? For exams in school? No, not only for anything. For immortality. Uh huh. You know, when you go to the libraries in the United States, fascinating as they are, they have these beautiful programs to encourage children to read more and more and more, especially during summer. Like a competition, the more books you read, and then you're going to get prizes. This is fantastic. Not about the competition, but the encouragement. That's beautiful. We need to do this in the spirit centers. Yes. How about that, huh? Telling people, if you read a book a month and you write a summary about it, huh? you can get another book for free. <laughs> I'm not so sure if that's going to be, you know, possible. But that's an idea. Hmm? Encouraging people to read. And change the emotions, the concepts, and creating new movements on the earth. Spiritism. No wonder Emmanuel told Chico, channel your healing mediumship. Let's write the books. And what a discipline. What discipline. What discipline to write those phenomenal books. I'm saying write in the sense he was a medium, writing medium, right? Mm -hmm. And he says more. 
he says that a book is a dynamo of creative energy. Emmanuel is unsurpassing this wisdom. Revelations telling us that a book is a magnet. He's going to attract new emotions, new thoughts, and a dynamo of creative energies. He's going to make us deal with our co-creative energies. We find the most advanced services of telementalization, seeing that over great distances in space and time, we're able to incorporate ideas from the spirit spirits who visited us many centuries ago. No wonder Leon Denis in the book After Death, and you can go to the YouTube of Kardec Radio, we have their um, playlist of 15 chapters, 10, 15 minutes each. On these 15 phenomenal chapters he wrote in that book, it's about the narrow straight path. Leon Denis talks about, and he tells you and I as a reader, and it's one of the most moving parts, he says, and you, dear reader, who is reading these pages, we're destined to meet one another, and for now I send you a hug. So he knew of this law, that a book is a dynamo of creative energy, and we're favoring the advancement of other people. What a blessing. So we need to be responsible when we write books. And when we channel books as well, as mediums. That's why we always ask, why am I going to publish a book just for the book in itself if I have all these beautiful books? Maybe because there is a topic that was not expanded in that direction yet, because as any science, spiritism is a science. And if there is something that was uncovered, we expand. That science, it's valid. There are many people in the spiritist movement who are like, but why this book or that book? Study first, analyze it, as Ellen Kardec recommends in the medium's book. Observe the facts, analyze the language. We cannot simply judge a book by its cover, by a few sentences, by one statement. We need to read it all and then evaluate. But we would always recommend, as Mentor Joseph said, Vanessa, for now, keep yourself in the great books. Alan Kardec, Leon Denis, Gabriel Delane. In regards to Spiritism, there are many books who are not, that are not Spiritist and are great. But these ones, the Spiritist ones, the ones that were channeled by Chico Xavier, Divaldo Franco, Raul Teixeira, and others, Focus on them first, because they are the big stars. And then the other ones may be satellite. Important, but not essential. We still need the essential. This book is essential. A book is a powerful magnet of attraction that molds our emotions and concepts. And a dynamo of creative energy that is going to help us incorporate ideas from superior spirits if you loved book before now pff, books became our best gift ever right ever 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 let me give an example sometimes we're gonna give gifts and we think oh I would love to give that person a book, but I don't think they're gonna like it. I think they like wine, and I give them a bottle of wine. But do you drink? No. I know it's poisoning to the body and the bare spirit and the mind. But why do you give that to the person? Because they like it. But for you, it's poisonous. So because they like poison, you're gonna give them poison? It doesn't make sense, right? If book, if a good book is the best, give it to them. If they don't read, that's their problem. Find a topic because of the zillion books that exist on the earth, there must be a book that is going to be well-fitting. Right now, we're identifying books 
are the best gifts ever besides our love, right? And Rudy is saying, to me, physical books are food, e-books, snacks. <laughs> Never read of, had, uh, heard of that before, but that's interesting. <laughs> that's great. So he's talking about also about advanced services of telementalization. A good book is service because we are changing the way we think and thought is life thought is life so if we can go straight to working on the electromagnetic force of our lives we're doing service advanced service when we go and give food to the homeless it's service but when you give a book to somebody, it's an advanced service. Hmm. Maybe we spirits should start a new movement, huh? A new movement. Yeah. Not donating messages. Donating books. A plan for 2017. How many books are you going to give and donate in 2017? Hmm? Let's, this is January 7th. 2017 okay how many books you're gonna give to people in 2017 let's see you know mark zuckerberg every year he has a new goal this year he's planning on traveling all the 50 states in the united states great how about if we create this goal donating books as many as we can in 2017 giving away donating books 2017 the year that we donate good books we give good books we offer good books to people okay now he wraps up the chapter by giving examples of socrates and jesus because they didn't give it. it's amazing why he talks about Socrates and Jesus and not others? Because Socrates and Jesus never wrote a book. So he's not telling us, write a book. He's saying in between the lines, be the living book. Because when you read the chapter, the books represent a powerful magnet of attraction. It may make us feel, oh, now I'm going to write a book. Yeah, if you want, you can. But he's saying, it's not about that. It's about... It's about the living part of it, being a living book of love and wisdom. Because he's giving two examples of people who never wrote books, Socrates and Jesus. Maybe we read this chapter and never pay attention to this, but Mentor Joseph saying, pay attention. Socrates and Jesus never wrote a book. Observe the sequence of the thesis he's sharing with us. Socrates is reflected in the pages. Jesus is portrayed in the books. But he says, the guiding human behavior through divine reflection, guiding human behavior towards the construction of God's kingdom amongst all creatures. So he's saying, it's about instructing ourselves so we can love more, we can serve more, to serve to be instructed to serve better. To be instructed to serve better. Finally, he wraps up by saying, to get to know the teachings is to undertake our own liberation. Yes, by getting new road to the new horizons of life. So he wraps up by saying, it's our responsibility to always study. Mediums study always. I don't need to study as we do. Otherwise, we'll be blind and we're going to hurt ourselves and others. And study always and make best choices so that our ideas and examples may reflect the ideas and examples of the superior spirits of light. And then we'll be writing a book in our living, in our daily lives. Hmm? It's our responsibility. So we wrap up with a major exercise for us as we 
change the day. It's already here. January 8th, midnight. And we are wrapping up the study today by proposing that this day, January 8th, we study a little more. How about that? A little more every day. Vanessa, I can't read a page, read a sentence, read a word, that's it. Anywhere. Now with internet, we can read anywhere. And if we don't want to read, you can listen. There's Kardec Radio in English, and there are many other beautiful things. There's Spiritist Network, beautiful videos from phenomenal scholars and spiritists throughout the world and many other resources that you know. The Spiritist Magazine, uh-huh, right? And here we are. How about it? Hmm? Yes. Livia, hello. It's also to put in practice what we learn in the books. And Tanya says she reads since she was 12 years of age. Thank you for sharing. And readers say, y you will donate as many as you can. Wonderful. Hello, Rihanna and Fatima. So, friends, wrapping up, thinking, 2017, the year we're going to share this dynamos of create, creative energy throughout the year. Books, donating books, giving away good books, and also studying more. It's our responsibility to study more. What's going to happen tomorrow, God allowing us? We're going to study chapter 5, which is about education. What is education? Haven't we just studied about the instruction? I don't know. Let's see. Tomorrow, meaning today, at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you, friends. Big kiss. Lots of hug. Let us visualize ourselves, a big group, hugging each other. And if you're watching this after, you feel the hug, too. We are all in the same constructive mental current. Let us share these thoughts, these feelings, and help one another build a better world, a better year in our lives. Thank you so much.